Hi, this is Sean Hobson, and right now we're working with our post players. One of the most important things you can ever teach a post player is how to post up. Most post players that just start the game, that have had no coaching, the first thing they're going to do when you tell them to post up down low is they're going to they're going to go down and they're going to stand straight up. And when a post player stands straight up, their defender's going to stand straight up with them, and both of them are going to be on parallel areas. So what we want to do is we want to create space for our post player. Whoever has the lower center of gravity is going to win in the post position. What we want this guy to do, first of all, is we want him to have a low stance. Remember, everything starts with a good base and a good foundation. Once he's strong on his base, then he's going to use his posterior, his rear, to get separation and to drive that player down into the low block. After he does that and after he's got good position, with his upper body, he's going to reach the ball forward so that his hands are out to catch the ball. Obviously, if Zach will show you right here, it's hard for him to reach around when he's got his hands ready. Now, I can feed the ball to him, and he's got good separation between him and the defender. You can always tell when a post player is getting tired because they'll start standing straight up in the post. When they start standing straight up, they're no good to your offense. They've got to be able to post up. One important thing in order to be a good post player is to understand the defender that's on you. What does he like to do? What are his tendencies? Does he like to play on the bottom side defensively? Does he like to front you defensively? Does he like to play behind you on defense? Or does he like to play on the top side defensively? Once you understand how the defender that is against you is going to play, then you know how to work him on offense. So again, we're going to show you this. If this guy likes to front him up, what we want Zach to be able to do is, if he's going to front, we're going to have Ben push him up high. And this is going to create some space so that we can throw over the top. So if he knows that this defender likes to throw in front, then we're going to tell our offense to work the ball up top. We're going to let him post. If Zach's going to play him on the top side, go ahead, play him on the top side, then he's going to need to learn how to open up the bottom side so we can work everything down there. If he plays on the bottom side, then he's going to learn to work his defender to the inside. This is called sealing your man. Every time we want to, to learn where that defender is going to play and seal our man so that if we get guard penetration, he can seal that man in and we can go ahead and give the post the ball. So if you learn how your defender plays, then you can work against them and counter their defensive moves. One of the most important things that you can always tell a post player is how to catch the ball. Now, that seems very simple. Well, when the ball's thrown to me, I catch it. But it's very important for post players especially to catch the ball correctly. If they have a post feed that comes from the wing, go ahead and play defense on it, Ben. If he's playing good defense on him, you can see how Ben's got his hand in there. If I take the ball and I feed it lightly from the post and Zach allows that ball to come to him, into him, Ben is going to have as much right to that ball as what Zach is. And you can see how it's easy to defend and knock away. So what Zach has to do is he's got to make sure, first of all, that his hands are out ready. Then as I feed the ball from the wing, he's got to come up and he's got to attack the ball and he's got to rip it out of the air. That's very important to go get the ball and bring it in. That keeps the defender because if the defender is going to reach around that much, he's going to draw a foul. So it's going to look a little bit like this. Good. You see, he goes and gets it away from where the other post player is, and that's going to make our post players able to get the ball, able to work in the post. So it's very important how to catch the ball. And one important move we want to show, which is one that doesn't get taught a lot, is how to, play a uh, how to defend a player, I guess, when they are fronting you. What a front is is when the defender swings around in front of our offensive player and is trying to keep him from getting the entry pass in from the wing. So what we want to do to combat that is you cannot take your hands and open them up and push the guy out of the area. But one thing you can do is you can use your forearm in the middle of their back and you can use your knee and your body to try to push this guy up off the block. And when they're in a fronting position, it's very easy to push them up out of the block because this guy has a lower center of gravity. So if he gets down and pushes his man up and gets some separation, the next step that we want him to do is we want him to put his hand up. And what he's doing by showing his hand up is he's saying, lob the ball up over top and I'll get it. 
Remember, when I lob the ball up, the ball cannot come to the player because if it comes to the player, this guy's going to reach up and he's going to deflect it off. The ball has to come up over the top of the defender so that the offensive player can catch it on the backside and score it. And that's how we work our post in the offense against the front. One important thing that our centers have to understand is not all the time when they get the ball are they supposed to attack the basket. At some point in time when they catch the ball, it's not going to be the right time in the offense or their defender is going to do a good job of stopping them attacking the basket. The centers also have to be good passers. In this case, what we want them to do is when the ball comes down to a center, we want him to turn and face as much as he can, but we also want him to protect the ball. If he just turns into the post player, a lot of times that ball could be stolen. So what we really want him to do is catch and turn so that they can see the outside of the offense to pass here, or they can pop the ball back out on the perimeter, or they can hit somebody that is cutting. So what we're going to show you here at full speed is when we've got a man over on the wing, one of the best things we can do is hit the post right here, the post turn, have this guy flash down or cut to the basket and hit him from the center. So if our centers can become good passers in the offense, it's going to make our offense more well-rounded. All right, let's do this at full speed. All right, post up, ball, turn, good, gives the pass, the cut across, and the score. One of my favorite moves to teach the post players is called a drop step. The majority of post players will play on the top side of a man. And the reason for that is because you teach the defense to play ball, you, man. And so in that situation, most of the time, the ball is out here on the perimeter. So ball, you, man. And so most of the time, this guy's going to be playing on the top side. So what we want to do is we want to have our wing players dribble down and try to feed this guy on the lower side. So the way the drop step all starts is, by the way, our post player seals his man to the outside and shows a hand down low. Then we want our wing players to deliver a pass down low. Now stop. Once he catches the ball, we want him to use the momentum of the ball traveling in. As he catches it, you can see that his foot's already ready for a drop step. So as he catches, he's going to just drop step in, and he's going to gather his back foot around, square his shoulders to the basket, and make the shot. And this is called the drop step. We'll show it at full speed here. Drop step. He squares his shoulders up, and nice and easy, he scores it off the back. So again, drop step. Catch, drop step, square your body, and make the shot. And that's going to make you a really good post player. One move we're going to talk about right now is called the up and under move. And usually this is used when the defender is playing on the bottom side and he's forcing this guy to turn into the middle because he knows that he's already got a good drop step. So we're trying to take his drop step away and make him one dimensional, which means that this po post player is going to have to catch the ball and he's going to have to spin inside to face the basket because the bottom side is taken away. So we've got a move called the up and under move. So what he's going to do this time is he's going to catch the ball. We're going to kind of walk through this together. He's going to catch the ball. He's going to spin, first of all, and face up the basket. Now, when he does that, this guy's going to jump out to block his shot. What he's going to do then with the same foot that he pivoted with, he's going to pivot around. He's going to shot fake him. As this guy shot fakes and gets off balance, then he's going to step through with the same foot, and he can power dribble now, power dribble, get that other foot, and a hop so that he can face up and he can make that shot. It's kind of a complicated move, but if you work at it slow and then speed it up, you become much better at it. So you're going to pivot, fake, step through with the same foot you pivoted with, power dribble, hop, and score. You might want to write that down and go through those sequences together. We're going to show you what it looks like at full speed here. All right, here we go. Good. Shot fake, takes it to the hole, and scores it. And that's called the up and under move. That move alone right there will separate good players from the lower players. So if you can learn that move, you're going to be at the higher caliber of all the centers.